Very quickly, I want to do this very quickly. Uh, 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 the, the, the most holy place contained what was called the Ark of the Covenant. Amen? What was inside that Ark? The Ten Commandments. What was above that Ark? The mercy seat. And on either side of the mercy seat were what? Cherubims. Now you'll remember that one of those cherubims represented who? Represented Lucifer, right? One of those cherubim was against God and one was what? Was for him. And then in the very midst, in the middle of those cherubims was the presence of who? Of God. The Shekinah glory. Jesus says, I'm going to build my house. So what is Jesus' house? It's his father's house, isn't it? I'm going to build my house upon this rock. And beloved, I want you to understand this is, this is, whoo. All right, I'm about to get excited again. <laughs> you see, beloved, uh, 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 Christ, the, the, the hill upon which he died is called Calvary or Golgotha. And who knows what Golgotha means? It means the place of a what? Of a skull. So think about this. You have a skull-shaped hill upon which, upon which Jesus dies. Now that skull-shaped hill, beloved, what do you think that skull-shaped hill represents? It represents death. It represents the carnal mind. <laughs> Beloved, Jesus has come to redeem, to win back the minds of humanity that were all against him. Remember? He says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Calvary, the very place that is to be the, the, the summation, the very symbol of the rejection of God, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. Do you know what God wants to do with your mind? He wants to put his law where? In your mind. Do you know that God wants this to be the new ark? So watch this. God Jesus says, I'm going to build my house upon the rock. Consider that rock, that rock representing your mind and my mind. I have a carnal mind, but I want Jesus to come in and to blow my carnal mind. <laughs> you know that's what happened when he died, right? I mean, can you imagine the devil going, yes, we won. We're marching Jesus to victory and not realizing that the very nail, the very cross that was being hammered down into the very hill... <laughs> Beloved, that cross, that cross is the very redemption that this thing needs. Christ desires to plant his cross in every mind. <laughs> so, so you have that, 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 that skull-shaped hill upon which we, we might say represents the mind that God wants to put his new law into our minds. But if that, is, if that represents the ark, if that skull-shaped hill represents our minds, the ark, and God says, Christ, I'm going to build my house upon this rock, then what would be above that ark? The mercy seat. Beloved, the mercy seat represented the throne of God. What I'm trying to tell you today is that as Jesus Christ sat upon his cross. Okay. Maybe you're just thinking. You understand that the cross had a seat upon which the, the, the victim would sit in order not to be out of breath, but then he would have to stand up to, or rather he would stand up to get breath. When he sat, he would be out of breath, so he would be continually going up and down, up and down, trying to alleviate himself, and this is what Christ was going through, beloved. Christ was seated like a king upon his throne. That cross represented the throne of Christ. So here he is on the cross. Uh, beneath him is the, the hill called Golgotha. And guess what's on either side of him? Uh -huh. 
One was for him. Upon this rock, <laughs> I'm going to build my house. <laughs> Beloved, listen to me. God's house does not fall because at Calvary are all the truths, the sanctuary, the law of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, everything is right there. Amen. We are solidly built upon Calvary. But now I need to get back to the title of my sermon <laughs> because it is called the sermon you see beloved I, I need to show you something go back with me to Matthew 5 go back with me to Matthew 5 beloved this is um, ooh, ooh. I want you to notice again how the sermon begins Matthew 5 verse 1 and seeing the multitude he went up into a mountain He went up into a mountain. And when he was set, <laughs> could it be, could it be that Christ first Sermon on the Mount was a foreshadowing of his final sermon on the Mount. But I mean, this is incredible. Listen to this. As you read through the Sermon on the Mount, listen to how it starts. Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Was Jesus made poor on our behalf? Oh, yeah. How about this? Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Was Jesus mourning on Calvary? Oh, yeah. Yeah, how about this? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Would you say that this described Jesus on Calvary? Or, or how about this? Uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Would you say? Uh, how about this one? Uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What do you think? Or how about this one? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. What do you think? How about this? Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Could it be? Could it be? That what Jesus is doing on the Sermon on the Mount is he, remember how he ends it? He says, listen, in fact, no, I can't even do that yet. Just, just let me read some more. Let me read some more. Here. Look at verse 13. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his, his savior, wherewith it shall be salted, uh, is it, it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle but put it under a bushel and put under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it may give light to all the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Question, were there people who saw Christ's good works as he was on a hill? Beloved, could it be? Could it be? <laughs> Go with me to verse, 30, verse 21. Same chapter, verse 21. Notice what the Bible says here. You have heard that it is said of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Let me ask you, did Jesus have a reason to be angry with his brothers as he was on the cross? Was he angry with them? No. <laughs> Go with me again. Go with me again to verse 24. Verse 24, in fact,